Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to cover normal distribution. Normal distribution is the most common and most important of all probability distributions that you're going to study at a later stage. Let's get started. We need to understand some important terms before we start a normal distribution. The first of which is random variable. A random variable is the numerical outcome of a random experiment. Let's understand with the help of an example. There are two types of random variables that are possible. First is discrete and the second is continuous. Discrete random variables take only countable number of distinct values. For example, number of students present in a class, count of heads observed upon tossing a coin, number of floors in a building. As you can see, for each of these examples, you'll have a specific value that you will return in response. Whereas for continuous data, it can take infinite values, typically measured in some kind of units. So for example, we can talk about time, height and weight, etc. So if we were to ask you the number of students present in a class, your response would always be in absolute numbers like 3, 4, 10, 40. But when we talk about height, it could be even written in decimals and could go up to multiple units of decimals. Therefore, we say the discrete data attains only certain fixed values, whereas continuous data, which is typically measured in some units, can attain infinite values. Let's understand the concept of probability. Probability is nothing but the chance or likelihood of an occurrence. For example, probability of obtaining two heads upon tossing a coin thrice. Probability of finding a student with a height greater than 170 centimeters from a group of 100 students. We'll cover probability in one of our later lectures, but for now, you know that these are the kind of common terms that are talked about. Probability density function. For discrete data, we can point towards an exact probability of an event, as it attains only certain discrete values. For example, probability of obtaining a head upon tossing a fair coin once is equal to 0.5. You can either get a head or get a tail. And we are looking for a favorable event here, which is a head, so it's 1 by 2, that's 0.5. Whereas for continuous data, we can't point towards exact probability at a given point. Therefore, we estimate area under the curve to calculate probability for an interval. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Suppose this is the kind of continuous data that you have, and the red point here represents a particular point on the probability density function. If you draw a line from that red point which touches the x-axis, you really can't measure what is the area under a particular point because in order to calculate the area, you need to have some kind of width. As you know, theoretically, a line is not supposed to have any width. It's just a simple connector, the shortest connector between two points. And hence, in order to compute the probability for a continuous data, we need to have an area like the one that we see in this example here. So when we have an area or a section, it becomes easier for us to calculate because now you get a width. Till the time you were following a particular point, you did not have any width and therefore you could not calculate the exact probability. Like I explained, a continuous data can attain infinite possible values in a given interval. Even if you were to choose a point between say a zero and a one, it could be infinite number of points because you can write something like a point zero 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 one two three point zero zero one five eight. Any number of values are possible. And that is where you can never point towards an exact probability of an event in a continuous function. Whereas in case of a discrete function, you can always point towards an exact value because it only attains certain fixed values. The yellow line here in both the pictures is called the probability density curve, which represents distribution of probabilities. Now let's talk about normal distribution. A continuous random variable x follows normal distribution if its values fall into a smooth bell-shaped curve, which is symmetric around the mean, that is, it looks the same on each side when cut down in the middle. As you can see in the picture itself, the area on both the sides is same. The shape on both the sides is pretty much the same. 
and what kind of distribution is a normal distribution it is a continuous distribution which means it can attain infinite possible values normal distribution is characterized by its mean mu and standard deviation sigma so we can see it in the picture again the middle line which divides the curve into two halves is mu or the mean and standard deviation determines the shape of the curve so the total area under the curve is one please note that the area under the curve in case of a normal distribution is nothing but the probability and as we know the probability can be a minimum of zero when an event will not happen at all or it can be at the highest one which is an absolutely certain event since the area under the curve represents the probability when we add up all the possibilities it can only become one a normal distribution follows the empirical rule also known as the 689599.7 rule now please watch our video on introduction to six sigma where we covered this rule it's again an important characteristic of a normal distribution so if you were to note down important takeaways from the slide you need to notice the content that's been put in bold normal distribution is a bell shaped curve it is symmetrical around the mean the total area on the curve is 1 and it follows an empirical rule let's talk about a special case of the normal distribution family which is known as the standard normal distribution as we discussed on the previous slide a normal distribution is characterized by its mean and standard deviation as there are infinite possibilities both for mean and standard deviation it can attain any numeric value you can imagine there can be infinite normal distributions so in order to establish a standard or a bare minimum for common reference the standard normal distribution came into picture the characteristic of the standard normal distribution is that it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one a value on the z distribution represents the number of standard deviations the data is above or below the mean these are called z scores or z values for example z value of two means we can fit distance of two standard deviations between the mean and this point if you see it visually so say this is a z value of two if you notice a picture we can fit two standard deviations and that is why it is called a z value of two so it's nothing but the number of standard deviations that can be fit between a particular point and the mean formula to transform any normal distribution x to the standard normal distribution or z distribution is z is equal to x minus mu by sigma if you notice what we are doing here in the numerator we are just taking the horizontal distance between a particular point and the mean and what we are dividing it by is the standard deviation as we just discussed it's the number of standard deviations which can be fit between the mean and a given point determines the z value so in order to establish a common point of reference for everybody's convenience there is a standard normal distribution that's in place standard normal distribution helps transform any normal distribution into a standard form and then we can work out on a problem and again transform it back to the original normal distribution we'll see as we practice further on normal distribution for now this covers an introduction to the normal distribution and the standard normal distribution if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe our channel we'll continue to make such videos for you thank you